Morning guys, we're on Revelation chapter 21, reading from the second part of verse 6. And we're just looking at some of the attributes of what a believer and what a, a non-believer will look like. Who is going to inherit the kingdom of God and the new go to the new heaven, new earth, um, or the new Jerusalem, I mean, and who's going to go to hell? And so we've got a, some criteria. And the second part of, well, I'm going to read from the beginning of verse 6. And he said to me, it is done. I am the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end. And then he says, to the thirsty, I will give the spring of water of life without payment. And so we see it says, to the thirsty. And so those who are thirsty for God, thirsty for the truth, thirsty for righteousness. And that is like a requirement. That's something that... Um, it should be in every believer's life. And so just a couple of uh, verses that talk about that, that water and being thirsty for that, that water of life. In Revelation, there's two in Revelation. One in chapter 7, verse 17 says, For the Lamb is in the midst of the throne, will be their shepherd, and He will guide them to the springs of the living water. So the believers will be guided by Jesus. Jesus is in His heart, and He's going to guide to the, um, the living water. And... The believer is going to have a desire for that living water. And God will wipe away every tear from their eyes. And so the, the believer desires to be in heaven one day where there is no more tears, no more suffering, no more pain. Um, he knows he hasn't got there, but he's got a heart for that. And that's one of the tests one could ask even today. is Do we have a heart? Do we desire? Do we thirst for more of Christ, for more of his righteousness, for that living water? Um Verse 22, And the Spirit and the Bride say, Come, and let the one who, who hears say, Come, and let the one who is thirsty come. Let the one who desires to take the life without price. And so the believer's got to have a desire, has got to be thirsty. But on the same note is that all who come and all who knock, God's not going to turn away. And so even today, today is the day of salvation. Thirst after God, knock, seek Him. And he's not going to turn you away. Isaiah 55 verse 1. Come everyone who thirsts, come to the waters. For he who has no money, come, buy and eat. And as you notice at the end of verse 6. We're thirsting for the water of life without payment. And we know that this gift of salvation is nothing. We don't have to pay for it. We want to receive that gift. We're thirsting for that righteousness. Um, it's so different to every other religion in the world where we feel like we've got to do something. We've got to pay for this reward. We've got to somehow earn this reward of getting to heaven in our own works. But this gift of God is without payment, as it says. And as Isaiah says, without price. Come and eat. And He who has no money, in other words, has none of these things. Going on to chapter 7, I mean, sorry, verse 7 of Revelation 21. The one who conquers will have this heritage, and I will be as God, and he will be my son. So not only is the believer desiring, thirsting for that water, but he's also overcoming. He is the conqueror. Why is he a conqueror? Because Christ has conquered, and Christ is in him, and through Christ, he has the ability to conquer. What is he conquering? He's conquering the world. He's conquering, um, in the sense, Satan has been conquered, so that victory has been won. So when he puts on the armor of God, he has the ability to conquer Satan. He conquers sin. There is no sin that has dominion over him. Whereas we're going to go through a list next week where we're going to see who are those in hell. Those guys in hell, are that sin has become part of their life. But as a believer, those sins are never part of their life. They may fall into that sin. But they have the ability through Jesus to overcome all sin. So just one verse to close with regarding overcoming. For 1 John 5 verse 4. For everyone who has been born of God overcomes the world. And this is the victory that has overcome the world. Our faith. Saved by faith alone. It's a gift of God. And when we come to Jesus and we're born of God, we automatically become overcomers. Who is it that overcomes the world except the one who believes that Jesus is the Son of God. That's the end of 1 John. And so when we believe Jesus is the Son of God, we automatically in His kingdom and we automatically become 
overcomers and we can overcome because he has overcome and so these are wonderful tests not only in our own life to say are we overcoming are we thirsting um, but also just to to uh, encourage others this is how we know we're in the faith here are some of the tests of our salvation so i trust you have a wonderful day god bless